Facebook is about to swallow the internet, your personal information sold to the highest bidder, and one Mac expert tells us how he used his iPhone to radically change his life. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. It's time for Twit's annual audience survey, and we want to hear from you. Please visit twit.tv slash survey and let us know what you think. It only takes a few minutes, and your anonymous feedback will help us make Twit even better. We thank you so much for your continued support. Twit.tv slash survey. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 302 for Wednesday, March 25th, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by MeUndies. MeUndies is the most comfortable and hip underwear you'll ever wear. Check out all the styles and get 20% off your first order plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash twit. Welcome back to Tech News Tonight. I am Megan Maroney. Have you taken our annual audience survey yet? Go to twit.tv slash survey. Tell us what you think. The survey is anonymous, so say whatever you want. We want your feedback. Now on to the show. Today, there was lots of social networking news out of the Facebook developer event, F8, held in San Francisco. But before we get to those headlines, I'd like to welcome Federico Vitici, editor-in-chief of MacStories.net. Vitici has been regularly covering all things Apple since 2009. Welcome, Federico. Hey, Megan. Thanks for, for having me. Such a such an honor to be here. <laughs> oh, thank you. Now, a fan of Mac Stories pointed me uh, to a story that you wrote about how you used your iPhone to help you through your cancer treatment. I mentioned the story on the other show I do, i5 for the iPhone, and I'm excited to talk to you directly now. Now, in 2011, you were diagnosed with stage 4 Hodgkin's lymphoma. You told your story really beautifully, and I encourage everyone to read it at macstories.net. Uh, you beat the cancer, but then after the chemo and the radiotherapy, you say that at first you went back to your old unhealthy ways. I'm sure a lot of us can relate to this. Eating poorly, spending too much on the time on the couch with our iPads. Tell us what made you decide to change and how you did it. Well, first of all, thank you for all the compliments. I really appreciate it. It's, a, it's been a very personal story to tell, and I wasn't sure about publishing the article, and I'm, I'm glad that you know, people liked it. Um, last year, um, it was about just before the summer. Uh, it was in June when I realized that I really needed to to make a change because I felt that I wasn't really uh, using the second chance that I was given. And um, you know, I was overweight again, and I I wasn't eating really well, and just you know, I I got obsessed. Uh, we work again, too much work. And I, I, I don't know how, I don't know if it was this, just one day I woke up and I, and I realized, okay, now I, I, what am I doing? But it, I, it did occur to me at some point in, in June that I, that I needed to, to get better. I needed to, I needed to get back in shape. And so initially I thought, I want to buy all these fitness devices. I want to try all the apps and I want to see what happens. So for about uh, three months during the summer, I, I bought a Fitbit. I bought a job on app uh, tracker. I downloaded hundreds of apps from the app store because I just wanted to try them all. It was a new obsession. And eventually, I, I, I mean, slowly, but... Sure, eventually I, I, I found the apps that were working for me. And in the process, it was, a, it was an interesting discovery for me because I, I was never really, uh, you know, into fitness or eating, you know, with better choices. I was never really, in my, in my, in my life before, I was never really obsessed with, you know, tracking everything about myself or trying to make, uh, you know, healthier choices when, when, it, when it came to food or drinks or exercising. And instead with the iPhone, I discovered that it was really help me, helping me and I guess because deep down, I've always been a very visual person and I've always been the kind of guy who needs to see numbers, who needs to see, you know, statistics to understand what's going on. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just built that way when it comes to work. And, uh, and I realized that I'm also that way when it comes to fitness tracking. So I, I started using all these apps uh, and all these, you know, uh, fitness trackers and... 
what happened next is interesting because Apple announced the Apple uh, the health application for iOS 8. So when you started and this process, that was before they had announced. The that was before. Oh, okay. That was before uh, WWDC in mm -hmm. June. Mm -hmm. So at WWDC, they announced the the health and the health kit. Uh, framework for developers. And so during the summer, I, I didn't want to commit fully to the iOS 8 beta. Uh, I was like, okay, I'm just, I'm just going to wait and see what happens. Uh, so in September, I, I was making good progress towards, you know, my, my fitness goals. I was losing weight again. I was eating much better and I was just feeling stronger because I, I started exercising again. And in September, I wanted to try the, the new health app on iOS 8. And it was really problematic for me because uh, there were many issues and bugs with the original, with the original version for iOS 8.0.1, I guess it was the, the long, you know, the original version of iOS 8. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, didn't start, I didn't start using the health app right away in September. I decided to wait for, for a couple of months. And Apple released a bunch of updates to iOS 8. And around the... I guess the end of the year, uh, when the I, I read from many people on Twitter and other blogs that I follow that the health app was, you know, received many bug fixes. I wanted to to check out the app again, and of course, uh, the fact that I had lost my job on <laughs> Tracker somewhere around Rome, I don't know where, uh, also helped my decision to start using just my iPhone. Uh, so what it was interesting because I had all this data about me. And I transferred all this information. I started using this central unified dashboard uh, on the iPhone. And, uh, and then I just went from there and, you know, I, I continued exercising and, and doing all my fitness routine on just my, just my phone. So you took all that data that, that had come from the Fitbit or the Jawbone and transferred it all over? I, I couldn't find uh, really exactly a way to transfer. That was really a bummer, actually, because there's no import feature for on the, uh, at least as far as I can tell, there's no import feature on the health app. And so many apps don't sync uh, historical data from their databases into the health app. So I just kept my old apps in a folder and I started using the health app. Uh, fresh from scratch with no data. And eventually, once I collected uh, two or three months, I deleted the old, uh, the old apps and I just continued using the alt app. Well, it's really one of, one of the functionalities that Apple should really consider an import feature for, from, from other apps. Well, presumably the, the Apple Watch will have that. Maybe that's why it's, it's, they, they don't have it now. Because, I mean, presumably the every, all the fitness tracking in the Apple Watch will be available. To I sync hope so. With yeah. <laughs> so, so the what? What's your favorite? Uh, what was your favorite wearable before you lost them? Which was the one that you liked the best? I really liked the the job on app tracker. I had a, an app twenty four uh, because I always had problems with Fitbit. I I ch um, had to return a couple of units because I always I always had issues with Bluetooth and you know charging. And instead, the job on I it was perfect. Uh, the, the battery um, lasted initially just one week, and then with the software update, they extended the battery life to two weeks, which was kind of impressive. Mm -hmm. And it, w it was really nice. It was, it was accurate. Uh, I, liked, I liked the, the Jobon app uh, application for, for the iPhone. And yeah, um, I liked the, you know, the idea of Jobon making a platform. Uh, because you can connect all these different services and, and apps to, to the job. And it, and it was kind of like a sort of unified dashboard before the actual health dashboard on iOS 8. Right. So what about the exercise app? Um, which exercise app did you use that you felt was best synced with the iPhone? So, so for since June, actually, I've been using Fitstar, which was recently acquired by Fitbit. Mm -hmm. And I really like it because, it, you know, it's got this professionally made uh, exercise videos. Uh, it shows you the workouts 
Um, there's instructions, there's the music is not too bad when you're doing uh, exercises and you can uh, you can pause and resume at any time. The, the, the app is really nice. And at the end of each, uh, of each session, so there's a bunch of programs you can you can choose. I went with the basic uh, seven minute workout and then with, you know, uh, with something more advanced. And at the end of each uh, workout, there's a summary of all the calories that you've burned and those calories will be saved into the, uh, the health app. Mm-hmm. But in the, past few, in the past two weeks, I've been, I've been trying these, uh, also this other app for uh, also seven minute workouts and it's called Carrot, uh, Carrot Workout, Carrot Fit. Oh, I've it's heard that Carrot. one. They have a whole it's, line of, yeah, they're, they're yeah, kind of sassy. It's an app that... It's an app that insults you. Yeah, right. <laughs> what? <laughs> While you're working out, and it, it's got this, you know, this uh, peculiarity of uh, treating users with, you know, different mm-hmm. attitudes. Yeah. And uh, but it works. You know, it it sounds like a like a, like something annoying, but it's got personality, and the workouts are just brutal. <laughs> it's it's but it's you know it it, it works with the with the alt app. And uh, I I like it. So I'm using these two. I I can you know switch between the, the full workouts of uh, Fitstar and the seven minute workout in in Carrot. Right. So if you want to be shamed into exercising, Carrot is yes, the way to go. Pretty much for sure. <laughs> Yeah, it sends you notifications every day, and it's like, hey, uh, I think it refers to you as meat bag. Yeah. Uh, you should exercise. <laughs> so I use uh, my fitness pal to track my food. I love it because I can just you know hold it up to the barcode, and um, you know I was in, in our kitchen just at lunch holding it up, and people were like, oh, that's too hard. And you pointed out in your article that's harder for you to use because part of being healthy is not eating out of the snack cabinet as I was doing here, but making your own food and, you know, not even, you know, making your own spaghetti sauce and not doing it in a jar. What did you find any solutions with your iPhone to that problem? Well, I'm using uh, LifeSum, uh, another food tracker uh, from the app store, and there's no, there's no real solution. So I just had to accept the fact that rather than having a super precise database of what I eat, I'm sort of building a reasonable approximation uh, just, you know, to have something that makes sense on, on a daily basis. So if, I, if I'm buying fresh ingredients, uh, I can't ask for, to, to the shopkeeper for a barcode because there's no barcode. Mm-hmm. So what I do, I just open LifeSum and I don't know, I, I just search for tomatoes and I try to, I try to find an entry that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it, if it, even if it's not super 100% accurate, at least it's it's a tomato, you know. I, I'm trying. I'm trying to. Again, it's a reasonable approximation of what I eat. So I'm trying to get a general idea rather than a you know than a breakdown down to the single calorie accurate of what I eat. Right. Um, initially, it was kind of annoying because the you know the the geeky part of me wanted to have this accurate database. Uh, it's just one of those things you need to accept, I guess. Right. Right now, we can't just take a picture of our food and that no. we've prepared <laughs> in it. It won't give us the calories yet. So yes. I, I've been experimenting with sleep apps lately. And I know do you you used to several different ones. Which is your favorite? I use this app called uh, Pillow, uh, which is uh, free from the App Store with an in-app purchase to unlock more statistics and it's really nice because you can use this app as a as a, like a regular alarm clock each morning or you can it's one of those apps that you put your iPhone under your pillow literally and it monitors your sleep uh, it uses the iPhone's gyroscope and other sensors to uh, to kind of guess how you sleep how much you move it records noises uh, during the night which is always funny when I wake up in the morning and I listen to, to, the, to, the, to the recordings in the, in the app. Um, and it gives you uh, uh, a breakdown of uh, deep sleep, light sleep, uh, REM sleep. And uh, it's, it's nice because it kind of, you know, over time as you record more sessions every day, it shows you a summary of the kind of person you are, you know, sleep-wise, and it gives you advice on how to do better. And it all, what I really like is that it plugs into the health database and it fetches data such as, I don't know, steps or flights climb today, and it tries to find co- correlations between these uh, between these categories. So 
for for myself, I was able to see that on, on the days where I walk more or I exercise more, I tend to sleep better, which is interesting because, you know, I can sleep better, exercise more. So it's kind of like, you know, uh, I see the whole benefit of, uh, of this new routine. Right. I, I tried an app that's called Sleep Better. Um, it's similar. You keep it in your bed. I mean, all of them, they seem to have to keep your iPhone in bed with you, which I guess makes sense because it's tracking your movements. But that's the thing that I think is keeping me up at night, actually having my bed, my phone in there and thinking, oh, is there an email? I mean, it's turned off, but just the idea of it. Uh, did you have that problem? No, because I, I try to, to silence all the possible notifications at night because I know that otherwise the temptation would just be too high. Right, exactly. So you had another interesting app that you tried called Lark. Tell us a little bit about what that does. That's really an interesting concept. It's kind of like a, like a textual Siri for fitness. So when you once you uh, download the app, you grant access to your uh, health and fitness information from the from the health app. And then over time, once when you open Lark, it's like a conversation with a, with an assistant. It's actually it it's, it seems like a person. It's a computer, of course. And so you you talk to this virtual assistant that shows you data from your, you know, uh, for, for your steps, for your sleep, for your uh, overall daily activity. And it talks to you and it's like, I'm seeing that today you've been, you know, you know you've been lazy. Why don't you take a walk? And... And it's interesting because you have these uh, pre-made responses that you can choose. And initially, it seems like a sort of like a toy uh, because, I mean, I can I can go into the into the health app and take a look at data by myself. Um, but uh, again, I'm liking the correlations that it finds and I'm liking how it sends me notifications every day. It encourages me to, to walk more. Um, so, for instance, the other day I, um, I got a notification. And, and it's sad that I, that I, that I was lazy uh, that <laughs> afternoon. So when I, I needed to leave my house in the evening and instead of taking, of taking the elevator, I just walked down the stairs. You know, it's these small changes that um, otherwise I would have forgotten about my step count that day. Uh, it's these small, meaningful, you know, changes that you can make every day and maybe they can become a habit uh, or maybe not, uh, but it, it, it's a new concept. I haven't seen any other app trying, you know, this sort of conversational style uh, when it comes to fitness. Right. So it's kind of cool. Well, it probably would tell you that you should be asleep right now since it's the middle of the night uh, in Italy. Before I let you go, do you have any advice for anyone who might be struggling with cancer or recovery? Well, that's, um, I mean, it's different for everybody. Um, uh, I, I don't, I don't, think I'm able to provide a suggestion, a suggestion that would be, you know, universal and universally accepted. But I can, I can say that, um, don't, uh, don't underestimate how these devices can help us on a daily basis, because yes, the iPhone, it's where you play, where you play games, where you go to Facebook and WhatsApp and you open Twitter, but it can also be a powerful addition uh, for you know fitness and health monitoring and and what's what's been really empowering for me is the realization that this device is always with me and I don't need to wear other sensors I don't need to buy more hardware I can just use the phone that is always with me in my pocket and. Yes, it's the, the same device where I keep all my stupid apps, but it's also this powerful, you know, assistant and it's always with me and, and it shows me steps and it shows me calories and it, and it helps me sleep better. So there's two sides to smartphones and this other one is, I think it, it is pretty important and it will be, it can definitely make a change for many people. Well, Federico, thank you so much for sharing your story here and online at Mac Stories. Uh, you, you guys cover daily coverage of, of all things Mac, and I appreciate it. And uh, get some sleep. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Coming up, hidden cameras catch teens texting, driving, and crashing, and find out why a fake nose might be the secret to the success of virtual reality. 
But first, you need to know about MeUndies.com. We spend 90% of our lives in our underwear. With MeUndies, you'll get great fitting underwear that's two times softer than cotton. MeUndies are comfortable and they're stylish. You can choose from plaid, funky, pinstripes to dozens of colors for both men and women. You can check out the photos yourself at MeUndies.com slash twit. This level of quality would typically retail for two times the MeUndies price. MeUndies is made from an environmentally friendly and incredibly soft fabric called Modal. It's sustainably sourced from beechwood trees in the Austrian Alps. Having comfortable underwear will change the way you feel every day. Once you try MeUndies, you'll never go back. So get yourself some good underwear. Go to MeUndies.com slash twit. Get 20% off and free shipping on your first order. You can save even more when you buy a pack. They guarantee you'll be happy or your first pair is free. That's 20% off when you go to MeUndies.com slash twit. And we thank MeUndies for their support of Tech News Tonight. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. Facebook owned the internet news cycle today. And by this time next year, they might also own the news and they might own the internet. Earlier this week, the New York Times reported that several news sources, including the New York Times, were in talks with Facebook to begin hosting news content within the Facebook interface itself instead of asking users to open a new website. And today's big Facebook announcement was that they would open up Messenger to developers. For the uninitiated, Facebook Messenger is the company's instant message programming program that previously only included features created by Facebook. With what they're now calling Messenger Platform, Facebook will start allowing developers to create their own apps that people can use when they chat. So apps that let you dress up your messages with photos, videos, audio clips, stuff like that. The idea is that eventually you'll be able to use Facebook Messenger in all the ways that you use Facebook, but instead of sharing things with everyone, you can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, just like we did in the olden days, but now with emoji. A new study on teens and smartphones will scare the pants off you if you have a teen, or if you ever drive, or if you ever get near a road. The AAA Foundation for Traffic Safety analyzed nearly 1,700 videos of teens who agreed to have cameras installed in their car to show what they were doing behind the wheel. So these are not hidden cameras. They knew the cameras were there. This video was provided by a company called Litix. It shows how distracted teens are by their cell phones. Now, one side of the video shows what the teen should be looking at, and the other side shows what they're actually doing. The study cited distraction as the cause of nearly 60% of moderate and severe crashes. That was four times that of previous government estimates. Now, cell phones were the result of only 12% of the crashes, but that's the almost the highest percent. The only thing higher was interaction with passengers, which caused 15% of the crashes. <sighs> Bloomberg reports that part of Radio Shack's assets that will be auctioned off to the highest bidder might be you. That's right. If you were ever a Radio Shack customer, chances are they ask for your name, your email address, and your physical address. Now that information is being sold, even though they promised that it never would be. A federal bankruptcy court is expected to approve or reject the asset sale tomorrow. Ars Technica says that you might be able to cure that nausea you feel when using virtual reality glasses, and that cure might be an artificial nose. Now, I am not telling you to go out and get a nose job. A group of researchers at Purdue University say creating a bulbous little nub in the corner of a VR projection could help mitigate those feelings of seasickness that some people feel when using Oculus Rift and other virtual reality devices. The idea is that a fixed object might reduce the apparent difference between visual and sensory motor stimuli that can lead to simulation sicknesses. Researchers are expanding the study with added support for noses of different shapes and hues and allowing users to use a photograph of their own nose in their virtual environment. So you know that thing that your mom always told you about how if you crossed your eyes and stared at your nose, your eyes would stay like that forever. She was wrong. And finally, I got some mail about yesterday's interview I did with David Wheeler, professor of journalism and freelancer for CNN. I enjoyed our conversation about the myth of Silicon Valley creating more jobs for millennials with a college degree, but some of you felt that I should have provided an opposing view, either from me or from another guest. Norm from Austin wrote me a very thoughtful email that said, publicly held Silicon Valley companies have a fiduciary responsibility to make a profit for shareholders, not to create jobs for everyone. Should they employ less qualified people to allow them to improve employment? And calling on the taxi industry as an industry that is losing jobs because of technology, 
where was the question about the jobs created in small towns that have next to no taxi coverage? Very good point, Norm. He also added, please bring great guests on your show, but do not let them go unchallenged. I want to learn from those I do not agree with, but only when they explain their platform under duress can they possibly convince others to modify their views. Thank you for that feedback. I welcome all of your feedback. Send it to me at megan at twit.tv or to tn2 at twit.tv. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash tn2. You can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. And today's TN2 selfie fan of the day is Paul the Glassblower from Minneapolis. He says he loves the show. Thank you for watching, Paul. It looks like he's watching after the show, which you can also do for a little while at live.twit.tv. Send us your selfies, tag your pictures with hashtag TN2Selfie on Twitter, Google+, Instagram, or via email to TN2 at twit.tv and tell us a little bit about yourself. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thank you for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.